Hi, today we are going to take a look on this Avionics item. This is a vintage instrument. I think it was designed in the 50s. It is actually a radar tuner. It was used in Boeing B-47 bomber, for example. This thing is very heavy, 10 kilos or something like that. You can see the reference on the front here. It was a part of the EPR-9 system. The reference of this one is TN-131. There is a very large connector here. And uh, two coaxial connectors. One BNC and one N connector. The length is 50 cm or something like that. Okay, and there is nothing else. Okay, so first uh, let's open that thing to see what is inside. That it looks like a steam machine. Okay, so on that side there is a cam here. Okay, on the bottom there is an oscillator. So this should be the local oscillator. Okay, so this is a Clistron 2K48. Okay, so the frequency can be adjusted by the plunger here there are two camps actually we can see here so there is an inner cam here which permits to set the frequency and there is another cam this one is adjustable by these little screws here okay so this cam permits to modify actually the position this seems to be a bandpass filter Okay, so according uh, to the frequency of the local oscillator, there is a change of the central frequency of this bandpass filter. Okay, and the adjustment permits to have the same difference. Okay, because the difference between the local oscillator and the central frequency, so this should be the input filter, this difference should be constant. We can see here the little screws which permit the adjustment of the waveguide bandpass filter. This is a serious design. There is a die cast base here, very thick, and everything is perfectly adjusted and mounted. Okay, so let's see the other side. Okay, so on that side here, uh, we have the servo control probably. Okay, for the frequency setting. So this is the shaft of the cam. And there is an helical gear here. The torque case of the motor it seems to be this thing here. Okay, we can see that there is a small pinion here. Okay, so when you have a small pinion, this is the signature of a motor. You can see that there is a serious filtering. You can see this ground connection uses this kind of comb contact here. And this seems to be a filter also. Okay, so there are four wires connected to that motor. So this seems to be an AC motor. Okay, so the rotation of the shaft of this motor permits the rotation of this shaft here. Okay, which permits the rotation of the cam. And uh, there is also a rotation of this large gear. So inside there is maybe the servo control device, I don't know. Okay, and there is another device here. Which is linked also to that shaft. Okay, so we have three wires here on that side and two on the other side. So this is maybe a synchro transmitter, but uh, 
The ship is not common, but this thing was designed in the 50s, probably. Okay, we can uh, measure the resistances. Okay, so there is resistance of 6 ohms here. Approximately the same here. And here also. Okay, so we have three times six ohms here. So this seems to be the stator of a synchro transmitter. Okay, so it makes sense because probably there should be an indicator somewhere which indicates the frequency of that tuner. Okay, we can see also that there is this cubic stuff here linked to the shaft. Okay, so I didn't see, but there is a small indicator here, which indicates probably the frequency. I cannot read. On the right, we have an electronic module with four vacuum tubes. Okay, so it is written, this is the pre-amplifier. And this is the IF output. Okay. So I think that this cable should be connected to the BNC connector. Yes, okay. So this is actually uh, the BNC connector here, P103. Okay, so the IF amplifier has four tubes. It seems that they are all identical. Actually, the reference is written here. This is the 56, 54. I don't know, probably a pentod. I am looking for a dead code. There is something written, maybe a coding of the dead code, but is not of use to read. Okay, so you can see that there is no power supply on that thing. So probably this module should be powered externally, the filament and the high voltage. And we can see here we have three OB2. So these are voltage regulators. I don't remember the voltage. Normally the input of the amplifier should be a detector, generally a contact detector. A high frequency diode 1N21 or 23 generally. And this is maybe uh, this large nut here, because normally it should be possible to change easily the detector. This diode is a mixer actually, and there is a mixing of that frequency and, and the frequency of the local oscillator. Okay, we can see the output of the clistron here. Okay, and the output of the clistron is fed here. Actually, the input here is fed to the bandpass filter. At the output of the bandpass filter, there is a detector, which is a mixer, actually, the mixer diode which permits uh, to have the product of the input signal and the local frequency. Okay, and the output of the mixer is actually the diode is fed to the amplifier module here. So this is actually a bandpass filter. I don't know the IF frequency of that thing, maybe 10 MHz or something like that. I don't know if we can Okay, so maybe we can have access to the mixer diode.
Okay, so it seems that uh, we have the mixer here. There is something written on it, but I cannot see. Okay, so the reference is 1N26. This one was manufactured by Sylvania. It is maybe the most important part of that device. So let's see on the bottom side. Okay, so there is nothing special. Okay, so there are a few resistors here. It seems that these resistors are in series. So this permits to bias okay, the voltage regulator tubes. And uh, we have uh, a few modules, uh, three modules here. Okay, so this seems to be a filter actually. So this permits to have a very strong uh, filtering for the motor. And uh, there is nothing else. Okay, so we have also uh, this module here in the middle. Oh, okay, look at that. We have two potentiometers on the bottom side of that plate. Okay, so there is, it is written low and high. And we have here, okay, so three test points. Okay, so we have a test point which is labeled K, another one R, and another one which seems to be the voltage of the klystron. Minus 1610 volts. Okay, and we can see that we have uh, two big stuffs here. So this seems to be large potentiometers. I expected to find a servo control amplifier, but it is not the case. There is a dead code here, May 1954. Now these two devices are actually wire-wound potentiometer. And we can see that there are two limit switches here. And the position can be adjusted using this nut here. Okay, you can see that uh, these micro switches can be activated Okay, by that gear, you can see that there is a protuberant uh, thing here. So this permits uh, to open or close uh, these two contacts. Well, there are also some power resistors. Well, we can see here well, the resistance is 180 ohms. And uh, there are also three resistors here. 33 ohms. Now this is the DC motor actually. Now this thing was manufactured by General Electric and you can see the hidden plate here. The voltage 28 volts, current 0.7 amp. There is a gear train attached. You can see it is it is not possible to rotate the shaft, but it seems that there is a brake. Also, there is a common point and uh, it is possible to change the direction of rotation by using uh, these two terminals here. Okay, the common point uh, is on the left here. There is a resistance of 20 ohms between the common point here on the left and uh, the two terminals on the right. Okay, you can hear the break and you can see also that the motor stops immediately when the power supply is removed.
the current is 0 0.35 amp at no load and that explains why there are these two filters here That's all for this radar tuner. Thanks for watching and see you next time for another video. Bye bye.